What's up guys? It's Matilda. Obviously, you know that because you're on my channel. And today I'm going to talk about another important topic and that is gender dysphoria. If you're new to my channel and you don't know that I'm transgender, I am transgender, which means that I was born a male and I then ended up transitioning into the woman I am today. I still suffer from gender dysphoria. And if you have no idea what gender dysphoria is, I can put it here on the screen. Gender dysphoria is a discomfort of being born into the wrong body and, and it can be pretty intense sometimes. Today I'm going to talk about how it felt prior to my transition and how it feels now with my gender dysphoria, what I'm dysphoric about and everything like that. So if that's something that interests you, keep on watching. But before we get into this video, don't forget to follow me on my socials. They're all down below, Instagram, TikTok, everything like that. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's down below, you know, click that subscribe and I, it will really help a girly out I have a major goal in 2021 to reach 100k so you know thank you in so much in advance but now let's get into this video So, as I said before, I'm going to talk about gender dysphoria today. However, I don't really have a script for this video. I usually have some sort of script with me to help me through the way. However, today I'm just going to talk from my heart. Because, like, I think it's a pretty important topic and I think that it's better to just speak from the bottom of my heart when I'm making this video. I just want to start off with, I still have gender dysphoria, however, it was really intense prior to my transitioning. I realized that I was transgender when I was around 15 years old because of my gender dysphoria. When I hit puberty, my gender dysphoria was, it was worsening AF, like it was extreme, it was intense. And I, uh, I'm led to believe that my gender dysphoria was actually worse than it is for a lot of other, other transgender people. Cause like they've told me, I, I hated everything about myself. I hated my my whole body, like every inch of my body, I just hated. I hated taking showers because I was too dysphoric. I couldn't even like another person because I didn't want them to like me back because I hated myself. And everything with like being intimate was out of the question. I didn't even have the big O until I transitioned because like I was too dysphoric about everything. And so it was really like I hated every inch of my entire body. And I, I couldn't even talk to other guys because the way they behaved around me and the way they treated me, I mean, they didn't treat me poorly or they did in the beginning, but once I got older, they didn't treat me as poorly anymore. They just treated me as one of the guys. And that, that got me dysphoric. Like I didn't want them to speak to me in the way that they did. And yeah, I got, I got dysphoric about a lot of stuff. I'm not going to lie. Like you girl was messed up. <laughs> My gender dysphoria was really, really bad. And once I transitioned, when I was around 18 years old, a lot of my gender dysphoria kind of got, like, went away. Um, first, I started to go on hormone replacement therapy and a lot of stuff changed on my body, like my skin, my face, I got boobs, I got a smaller waist, I got wider hips, and all of these changes kind of helped me, or they didn't kind of help me, like, they helped me, like, they helped your girl, like, honestly. And that that changed kind of saved my life, if I'm going to be honest. I, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't transition, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video. And as I said, a lot of my gender dysphoria kind of went away when I transitioned. However, not all of it. I still actually have some gender dysphoria today. Sometimes it's like slim to none and sometimes it's worse. And I actually have one of those months right now where I feel dysphoric about a lot of stuff. And I actually get comments on a ba daily basis of people saying like, how can you be dysphoric? You're so beautiful. And even if you're conventionally attractive, you can still suffer from gender dysphoria. It doesn't really go away, not entirely or not for me. It didn't, it didn't leave entirely. It just kind of went away in the shadows and it waited for me and it was just like jumping at me when I least expected it. That is kind of how I feel, but 
I'm going to try to explain how my gender dysphoria feels like. So in the beginning, prior to my transition, I hated everything about myself. I like hated my personality. I hated how I look like. I hated my my entire self. I just didn't like. And now when I have breasts and I have a vajayjay and I am the person I want to be, I can still suffer from gender dysphoria. First, I had gender dysphoria over my entire body and then I kind of, you know, I fixed my boobs. I got a vajayjay, I changed my body and the gender dysphoria kind of moved to certain points. And those spots on myself got more intense. In the beginning, as I said, everything was covered of gender dysphoria and now I still have small spots on my body that I dislike, that I'm uncomfortable with. As for example, my Adam's apple, I haven't shaved it down, I haven't removed it. However, I am still contemplating if that's something that I want because I feel dysphoric about it. However, I don't want to have any any unnecessary surgeries if it's not something I really, really want. So I am still contemplating about that. I get it for free if I want to ask because I'm transgender and we have free healthcare here in Sweden so I can get it for free. However, I don't want to I don't want to have any unnecessary surgery if it's something that I don't really really want. So yeah, that is how my gender dysphoria is about today and even though I am conventionally attractive and I know that people see me as a cisgender woman, I will always know that I'm not a cisgender woman. I will always feel dysphoric about not having biological children. I will always feel some sort of gender dysphoria because my vagina isn't really entirely the same as cisgender women's vagina operate differently. I know that it doesn't have the same functions as a cisgender vagina and that is something that I will always have gender dysphoria about and I still feel dysphoric about my face sometimes. I I don't like my nose for example. I think that it's too big because society has this kind of picture of how the perfect cisgender woman is supposed to look like and that perfect picture she has a small nose. So that is something that I always struggle with. I feel like my nose looks kind of masculine and I don't really like my jaw. There's a lot of stuff. There are a lot of stuff with myself that I get dysphoric about and that's normal. However, how to help with my gender dysphoria, I try to look myself in the mirror and I try to tell myself stuff that I like about myself. For example, I try to tell myself that I like my hair, I like my how my body looks like. I don't try to fixate on the stuff that I don't like about myself, I try to fixate on the stuff that I do like. And also I try to tell myself how far I've come. So for example, if I feel like my breasts aren't as big or as natural looking as cisgender women's. I always try to tell myself like, oh my god, Matilda, like eight years ago, y you were living in a male body. Like, please just chill. You're not a cisgender woman. You will never be a cisgender woman. However, you are a woman and you are valid and you are beautiful. So for God's sake, pull yourself together, woman, and try to love yourself. Like, God, how hard can it be? So I always try to like pull myself together, try to tell myself that I am valid, that I am beautiful. And I try to highlight the things that I love about myself and not so much on the imperfections or the things I don't like about myself. So yeah, that is what I do to handle my gender dysphoria. However, I think that that was everything with this video. I don't think that I have anything else to add. I'm not entirely sure. As I said, I didn't have really have a script for this video. But yeah, I don't think that I have anything else to add. I think that I said that anything that everything that I wanted to, but if you have anything that you would like to ask me in a comment or anything of that nature, just please tell me below. But if you like this video, please give it a like, comment, subscribe, and also the little bell icon to get future notifications whenever I post. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.